this evening weather briefing for Wednesday, July 27th, and this is the evening edition. I am Josh Brown. Uh, hope that you had a great Wednesday, and I have to say it has been a just it has been another hot one across Central Florida. But the heat's going to get is going to continue to build in as we head into both your Thursday and Friday. So, so remember, if you got any outdoor plans, just take the uh, heat very nice and slow. But we do have some showers and thunderstorms that are happening right now across portions of our coverage area this evening. We'll look at the radar in just a minute. And also, uh, I'll break it down with Futurecast to show you when the rain is going to end this evening and also show you how hot the temperatures are going to get for both your uh, Thursday and Friday. So all of that here in just a little bit. But let's go ahead and take a look what's happening right now on the uh, Bear Threat Dead radar and, and show you show you exactly where the storms are at <clears throat> and uh, let's see that we got i see that we got uh, mike pierce in the house uh this evening checking in from canada so it's always good to have you as usual mike all right so let's go ahead and see again who's getting some of that uh, wet weather this evening and most of that is most of that is just to the west of orlando as you can see on the uh, radar and because of that, and due to the heavy rain, a flood advisory has been issued for the western portion of Orange County. And that will go in, in effect, I believe, until 9 o'clock, so at least for almost the next uh, hour or so. And uh, according to the uh, National Weather Service, uh, uh, they have report or they have uh, estimated on the uh, rainfall map uh, of, of, of an inch and a half to two and a half inches of rain already. But uh, but the Weather Service uh, is saying that the rainfall amounts of one to two inches could be expected in the next hour over in the flood of I Street area. So this could bring the possibility for some minor flooding. So remember, if you see any flood waters on roadways, please remember you turn around and don't drown. And it's not just the uh, heavy rain that is happening right now in the western part of Orange County, where again, that flood of I Street is currently in effect such as for Oakland, Windermere, stretching all the way down towards Disney. Uh, but these storms this evening are producing, uh, if I turn on the uh, lightning, it is producing a lot of lightning strikes uh, with these uh, thunderstorms too. Now, just to be clear though, that none of these storms are severe, and I'm not expecting anything severe with the with this uh, line of storms uh, as we get through the next, uh, uh, I guess you can say one or two hours. But I know, we'll, I know we'll start to uh, face things off soon. But uh, most of that, I believe, is moving from due south to north uh, at about, we'll say, 40 to 45 miles per hour. So the other thing is about the lightning, that if you're outdoors, uh, the best thing to do is try to get indoors and wait until uh, these do pass through. Because remember, the other thing you need to know is that if you hear thunder, that means you're close enough that you may get struck by lightning and you do not want to get yourself struck. So please do get indoors immediately until most of the uh, storms do pass through. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and turn on the velocity and see how strong the uh, winds are with these uh, storms at the moment. And as far as the winds go, it looks like uh, it's not looking as impressive uh, as you can see. Normally, when you see these uh, darker reds and greens and sometimes lighter greens and reds, that means the winds are picking up, but I don't see much of that on the velocity. So so I think the wind threat is low. So I guess the concern is it's just the lightning and the heavy rain, uh, again, that we are seeing in portions of our coverage area. And, <clears throat> and it's not just uh, the Oakland area or perhaps for, for Windermere and Disney that is getting pounded by heavy rain right now, but it looks like there's also some heavier showers and storms as I pan to the south a little bit over here in the northwestern corner of Osceola County, just to the west of uh, Kissimmee, but mostly it's around the celebration area is where the heaviest of the rain is at right now. And there's also a little line right here that is uh, stretching down towards Highway 27 into uh, Polk County, just uh, between the cities of Haines City and Devonport. All right, let me, zoom out, let me zoom out just a little bit, and, and it's not just that, but of course there's some more showers and storms a little bit up north, this time affecting the northwestern corner of Orange County for places like uh, Apopka to uh, Zellwood and stretching all the way up towards near Mount Dora and Eustis and Lake County. Again, uh, nothing is severe at the moment, but, but these storms again are producing heavy rain and a lot of lightning. 
And then we got uh, more of the same up here as I pan up to the north uh, in parts of Volusia and Flagler counties in places like Pearson, all the way up towards, uh, let's say, the southwest corner of Flagler County that's along and east of Highway uh, 17. Again, moving, it's moving the same direction, which is moving from due south to north at 40 to 45. So let's go ahead and do some tracking uh, with these storms. As I zoom back in a little bit uh, closer, and I think we'll put a track with this uh, line right here in the uh, flood advisory area, which again is in effect for Western Orange County until nine o'clock. So, so we'll put a track starting here, just to the northeast of Oakland. Again, moving due north at about uh, 40 to 45, but I think we'll put this here as far as, uh, uh, yeah, about 40 miles per hour. I think that could get a better, could get a better picture. And let me go ahead and uh, fix the uh, timing of the track of the storm. So for those of you that live in McDonald, uh, which is in, again, the northwest corner of Orange County, just not far from, Wils from where Zellwood is at, uh, you may get you may get a, another batch of heavy rain at 8:11. Uh, uh, Merrimack at 8:14, if I pronounce that name of the location correct there, and for in Drizellwood at 8:15. So if you live in these areas, you got about the next about 10 or 15 minutes or so until the next batch of heavy rain moves in uh, to y'all to y'all's location. Now for Zellwood, you're just getting a little bit of light rain, but more of the heavy stuff could move in again very uh, very soon. And let me go ahead and uh, put another track uh, with this line of heavier showers that is, uh, again, moving in from Orange County and into the uh, the uh, northeast corner of Flake County, just out just outside of Mount Dora in Eustis. Again, it's moving due north at about 40 to 45 miles per hour. So that should affect places like uh, Johnson's Corner at 812, Paisley, also the same thing, 812. Blue Lakes Ridge at 813 and Chain O' Lakes also at 813. So any any of these areas I've called out, just uh, just just be just be on alert uh, that you may see some of those heavier showers and storms in the next uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, so as far as the uh, rain totals go, let's go ahead and uh, take a look and see how much rain uh, some areas have received so far, not just from earlier today, but right now. And at the moment, as I zoom back in a little closer into the western corner of Orange County, where, like I've said, the flood advisory is currently in effect. So places such as the uh, Winter Garden area in Fort Ocoee, it looks like you're getting you're getting up to about uh, at least close to two inches uh, of rain so far with these uh, storms this evening. And then a little farther south uh, along 429, uh, so far over 1.7 inches of rain has already fallen uh, with the heavy rain. And then as I pan a little south uh, down towards uh, near Disney, uh, so far you have received over 1.27 inches. But since the rain continues to remain heavy in the flood advisory area, again, I think I think the totals are going to add up a little more. So, so that's why it's a good idea for the weather service again to issue the uh, flood advisory until 9 o'clock. All right. So for other locations, as I pan up to the north just a little bit, so as far north as near Zillwood, uh, right now, it looks like you have received over 1.13 inches uh, of rain uh, with these uh, thunderstorms this evening. And then from the storms that were pretty much around uh, this area here earlier today, for places like uh, Bithlow towards near the southeast corner of Seminole County, it, so far you have received uh, close to an inch of rain from earlier today, which is uh, not a bad number, but these are minor totals, so just so you know. And then back up to the northwest, where parts of uh, Sumter and Marion counties did see some storms earlier today, but it looks like it has already ended. But it looks like some pretty good totals have uh, been received over in the southwest corner of the county. Well, actually, I should say maybe just uh, to the south and west of downtown Ocala. But I'll do the same thing. I'll zoom in just a little bit uh, closer. So I got a picture as I pinpoint the totals. So right here, just not far from where the uh, the uh, Orla Orlando. Ocala Executive Airport is located. 
Uh, so it looks like earlier today you have received over two and a half inches uh, of accumulating rain, accumulating rainfall from those uh, storms today. And then a little farther south you go down towards uh, at least south of the airport, you have received the same thing, which is uh, two and a half inches of rain. Sorry, something just popped up on my screen here, so I apologize. <laughs> But yeah, just south of the airport, same thing. You have received over two and a half inches uh, from the uh, heavy rain that uh, came through portions of Marion County earlier uh, this afternoon. And then farther to the south uh, south there, which is uh, well, maybe you should say close to the uh, uh, rest station or maybe the way station, which is uh, south of town. Same thing, two and a half inches of rain. So, th so those are in the yellow colors. But for Ocala, it looks like you have received over three quarters of an inch of rain from uh, today's storms. And as I go ahead and pan up uh, to the north just a little bit, uh, so far with these uh, storms up here in parts of Volusia County, especially around the Pearson area and right along Highway 17. Let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit uh, closer here. So far uh, for, folk, for you folks in Pearson, uh, you have received over 1.27 inches uh, of rain uh, from the storm so far. And then if you go a little up north, uh, so far, up to uh, nearly nearly up to an inch of rain has been received uh, just north of the city. Other locations uh, from the storms earlier today, like in parts of uh, Sumter County, so right near the villages, uh, you have received over a half inch of rain from the storms this afternoon. And then right down here, just from Bushnell, which is located east of I-75, Look at this over look at this, look at this here up to 2.1 inches of rain had had again from the storms today again these are pretty good pretty good totals but again it's not excessively but it's just minor all right uh, down a little south you go into portions of uh, polk osceola the two counties so such as uh, haynes city and devonport which is located right here near interstate four it shows that up to around three quarters of an inch of rain had fell or has fallen uh, so far from uh, the storms this evening. And that goes for the same thing in places like Celebration, which is located uh, not far from where Kissimmee's at in perhaps near Disney, just around three quarters of an inch of rain had has already fallen. And then over into the, into the eastern corner of the county, uh, right here, just along just uh, near where uh, Deer Park is at, which is 192. It shows that uh, in the dark green colors that you have received between three quarters to perhaps an inch of rain. Again, these are minor totals, but not too bad. But where you see these other other colors, such as uh, blue, that does uh, indicate that the rest of you have received somewhere between about a tenth to a quarter of an inch of rain. So there you have it there. All right. Again, it's not just the rain that we have been seeing for some of you today and for others right now. But again, the other concern was the heat. So as we go back to about around uh, four o'clock, well, before that, but just after 3.30 this afternoon. And as I pinpoint the uh, temperatures location by location, so like uh, today here in Metro Orlando, we did hit a high temperature today at 94. And then a little farther south you go into Kissimmee, you did hit a high temperature today at 91. Uh, of Winter Haven, just like for Orlando, the high today for you was around 94 degrees. And then up to the north in places like the villages, you did hit a high temperature at 93. The high today in, in Ocala was around 87, but of course you had some storms uh, between 3.30 and 4 earlier this afternoon, unless it was before that. And then uh, for Sanford, the high today for you was around 92. And then back over towards the far east and places like uh, Daytona Beach uh, for you, just like Sanford, you did hit a high temperature at 92 degrees. And then for the Palm Coast, er the Palm Coast area, which is up in uh, Flackler County, you did hit a high temperature today at 86. And then for places such as Titusville and for the Melbourne areas, you did hit a, a high temperatures uh, in the upper 80s. But again, it's going to get a lot more hotter as we head into tomorrow and Friday. So be ready. 
All right. Uh, as we're in the eight o'clock hour, here are the current temperatures. And some of you, because of the rain, temperatures are cooling off into the uh, 70s. So like right uh, here, or I should say back to the west in places like Ocala, uh, you're sitting right now at 76 degrees. Uh, there's there's a current temperature at 78 in the villages. Right now here in Orlando, where the metro's not seeing any rain at all, as it, it's mo as it is mostly just west of town, you're still sitting at a current temperature at 87, which is pretty warm. Uh, down in Kissimmee, at the moment, you're sitting at about 83. It is uh, 86 right now in Sanford and farther east you go along the coast. Uh, temperatures are mostly sitting in the middle 80s. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at Futurecast and show you again how hot the temperatures are going to get as we get into both your Thursday and Friday. And before we do that, if you're just coming into uh, Facebook Live on this Wednesday evening, uh, please do feel free to go ahead and share this with your friends and your families and or perhaps your other followers, uh, And you know, which of course you know my motto and that is uh, sharing is caring. And before we also move on to, uh, to uh, Futurecast, I'm gonna go ahead and share this uh, live feed to the uh, other Facebook pages which is the group pages, of course. So if you can give me just uh, about five minutes or less, then we'll move on again to the rest of our update. Hmm. All right, sorry about that again, everybody. All right, so let's go ahead and look, have a look at uh, the future cast. So heading into the rest of this evening, I do expect, first of all, the storms to wind down by around midnight. But temperatures, again, will more, remain pretty much for the overnight and into the morning hours in the 70s, as usual, like we always see every summer morning in our state. And then, just like that, temperatures in the afternoon will dramatically increase from the 70s to the mid-90s. Yes, I said that. I'm talking about mid-90s for highs for most areas, especially in our inland, inland locations as we head into tomorrow afternoon with not a whole lot of rain to deal with, of course. So the chances for the next few days will be looking low. I mean, really low. 
And yes, the heat index values will also be in the triple digits. So remember, if you're going to be outdoors, if you have to be outdoors in the middle of the heat uh, during the afternoon tomorrow, again, remember to put uh, plenty of sunscreen on you and also remember to uh, drink plenty of water to keep yourselves hydrated. And remember just to, you know, go find a shady spot to keep yourselves cool at times. And remember, and again, this happens every year uh, during the hot weather, and this is for adults, remember to not leave your child or your pet. And I mean it. Do not ever, ever think about leaving your, ch or your child or a pet inside alone a hot vehicle. Because if you do, you could, you know, get yourself, uh, you know, arrested and end up in jail. And, and of course, uh, you may never know, your child or pet can, you know, lose their life from the heat, especially when the air is not running in the, in the hot car. So please do the right thing. And again, the best thing to do before you lock up your car is check the back to make sure you're not leaving your pet or your child behind. So please be smart about it. And I've talked about this many times too. All right, so moving on. All right, so getting into the evening hours of your Thursday, it looks like we'll see temperatures wind down from the 90s and into the 80s uh, around sunset, at around, around at or after sunset, that is. And then for low temperatures late tomorrow night and into early Friday morning, as usual, again, we'll see lows in the low to mid 70s across most of our coverage area. And then here we go again, Friday afternoon, this is 4 p.m., and we'll see another hot one with temperatures rising quickly in the low to mid 90s with heat index values again rising into the triple digits. So it's not just tomorrow, but Friday also will be another day of, of, brutal, of brutal summer heat. Then as usual, Friday evening around sunset, temperatures will wind, will wind down from the 90s down into the 80s. And then the overnight, which is late Friday and into early Saturday, we'll see low temperatures in the 70s so there you have it there and let's go ahead and take a look and see how, uh, what time the storms will be winding down tonight with the uh, future cast so it looks like the storm should be able to wind down between 10 and 11 o'clock late this evening so that means that for the rest of the overnight after the rain winds down will be mostly dry starting off in the morning tomorrow same thing looking dry but it'll be muggy at times and then as we take you into the afternoon this is about around three and four o'clock and like i mentioned most areas are going to be dry so the rain chances will be around 20 percent or less so according to future cast it shows that uh parts of orange and seminole counties in places like winter park into altamont springs could see just a quick shower but other than that it's not going to help temperatures cool down that much so so again, the best thing to do to, uh, you know, to do to, to keep yourself cool is to, just to stay indoors. Now, what about for your evening plans uh, tomorrow evening? Well, according to Featurecast, it shows that a couple of isolated showers and storms may develop in some of our northwestern counties in places like, uh, let's say, from uh, Sumterville over here towards Wildwood and perhaps as far north as Bellevue, which is in southern Marion County. So you could see maybe a few spotty storms around seven o'clock in the evening tomorrow and maybe a pop-up shower here in parts of the metro and maybe some over here down in, in the southern and eastern corner of polk county but other than that will still be dry but conditions again will stay muggy not just for the evening but into the overnight late tomorrow night and even into early friday morning so as we take you into friday afternoon same thing like tomorrow some of you could see just a brief shower or two with the with rain chances staying at 20 percent or less so this is uh, 5 p.m in the late afternoon of your friday and it shows that there could be just a quick shower maybe right over here near oakland where they're getting pounded by hip where the city's getting pounded by heavy rain right now and maybe one right here maybe one right here just uh, near pearson in the northwest corner of volusia county and maybe some of the extreme southern portions of polk county and then it looks like there could be possibly a few storms uh, over towards the west uh, in parts of Sumter and Marion counties between 7 or 8 Friday evening. But like I've mentioned, most areas will be dry, but it will still be feeling a lot humid. And there's the clock that ends uh, towards early Saturday. 
The rest of that uh, night looks to stay, again, humid, but quiet. So let's go ahead and take a last look at the radar, because for those of you that are just joining in here to uh, Facebook Live, and if you didn't get to uh, see it earlier, well, here it is Here it is one more time. And again, uh, we're watching some showers and storms that are happening right now, especially in the western corner of Orange County this evening. And because of that, once again, the Weather Service just a little while ago has posted a flood advisory uh, for the western part of the county. And the areas that are included in in the advisory polygon includes Oakland, Ocoee, Winter Garden, which is right, which is right here near 429, all the way down towards Windermere, and even Disney is also included in that flood advisory polygon. But it looks like some of that heavy rain is starting to wind down a bit uh, over here near Disney, right along the 429 Turnpike in the western part of the county, and perhaps over here into Oakland. But as you can see, if you go farther towards the east and places like Winter Garden, Ocoee, and now this time, Dr. Phillips at Orla Vista, it uh, looks like you folks are getting pounded by heavy rain uh, this evening. So there is a chance that if you live near downtown Orlando, that you may get a little bit of some of that heavier activity very soon. But most of that, again, is moving up towards the uh, uh, from north uh, or should say from south to north at about 40 to 45 miles per hour. And uh, as I pan up to the north just a little bit, there's more of the same as well. Just uh, some heavier pop-up showers and storms up here in the northwestern corner of Orange County, uh, just uh, to the east of Zillwood. And there is some heavier pockets of downpours right here just to the east of Mount Dora and Eustis and parts of uh, Lake County. But it's not excessively heavy like it is in the western part of Orange County. And there's more of the same up here again. For those, for those of you that live in the northwest corner of Volusia County near Pearson, and even for the western side of Flacker County, let me go ahead and zoom in just a little bit uh, tighter. So most of the heaviest of the rain is just to the east of Crescent City, which is not in our coverage area. So just so I just wanted, wanted to let you know about that. But as you can see, it's uh, mostly to the west of Bunnell. And I think, let me go ahead and zoom in just. Let me, go, let me go ahead and zoom in just a little bit tighter if we can get some maybe some street levels or perhaps smaller communities in the western part of Flacker County because I think that will make perfect sense. So there is Highway 100 right here, Florida 100. But as I uh, zoom in just a little bit closer to this heavy spot, uh, it shows that there is some heavier, uh, heavy rain right over here. Let's see. Uh, looks like there's some heavy rain in the western part of Flacker County and in, in, in uh, streets like uh, County Road 110, uh, County Road 95, and there is uh, Frederick Farm Road, Smith Lane, and there's uh, Quarter, it's kind of a familiar name there, Quarter, Ho Quarter Horse Lane and Panda Bear Lane. So these are the streets there that are getting impounded by heavy rain this evening in the western corner of Flacker County. So sometimes I might have, uh, sometimes I have to uh, zoom in really tighter to get, uh, to get a better street level and perhaps some, some smaller communities. So that's why. But yeah, most of the heaviest of the rain here is in the western part of Flacco County and smaller communities between between Crescent City and Bunnell. But again, that is moving from south to north at 40 to 45. And again, there's some heavier showers, which is about to move out of Pearson, uh, at least uh, shortly. But again, nothing severe. It's just producing just old, just good old fashioned heavy pours along with uh, some lightning. Just, just like it is in a typical summer day. And there's a couple more showers right here, just a little bit uh, south, but not as excessively heavy like it is again in parts of Orange County. But this is uh, right down here in parts of uh, Osceola County. This is uh, just to the southwest of St. Cloud and east of Point Siena. Look like some of those showers are uh, are mostly on top of uh, Lake Toho P. I'm going to try to butcher this name of the lake here, Lake Toho P. Caliga. I don't know if I pronounced that correct there, folks, but if I did, I apologize. But but this is the lake here that is getting pounded by uh, well, not really pounded, but just uh, producing just a quick shower uh, this evening. So it looks like Saint Cloud could be impacted there very soon. But I don't think it's going to last uh, much longer since it's moving probably a little bit quick. 
in still there's a just a quick downpour here around the Haines City like Hamilton in the Dundee area and that could move towards Devonport very soon and maybe as far north uh, up around the northwest corner of Osceola County maybe near Celebration where the rain the heavy rain where the heavy rain is starting to wind down but you may get a quick heavy shower from that from the one that's coming from out of Haines City soon so be aware of that And here is the big picture one more time. So other areas like the villages, Ocala, Daytona Beach, Palm Coast, Titusville, Melbourne, the rest of Osceola County, and for the central part of Polk County, so you are looking quiet. So most of the rain that is happening right now will, post, will mostly be happening again in this area until they wind things down soon. And the same also up here from Pearson all the way up towards the western corner of Flagler County. So uh, there you have it there, folks. So the next thing we'll go ahead and take a look at is the GFS. Let's see what's going to be happening as we get through the next uh, couple of weeks. So we'll start off with the final weekend of July, such as Saturday. And yet again, we'll see the same thing like we'll see tomorrow and Friday. Just another day of some dry weather, but it's the heat that will be a big concern. So just a brief shower possible, but not a whole lot of rain to deal with. So any better rain chances that do happen on Saturday it looks to be mostly up north into the uh, Mississippi Valley region, where the chances will stay mostly about between 30 to 50 percent. So just around average. And here are the high temperatures for Saturday. And yep, we're talking about another brutally hot day with highs in the mid to upper 90s, especially from Orlando and North, with some of with some of the, some areas uh, in places like Jacksonville, uh, perhaps up towards uh, Savannah. There could be some record high temperatures that may reach into the triple digits. So yep, this is another reminder again that we're not done with summer quite yet. But uh, up to the northwest and parts of the Mississippi Valley region, where there could be a bit of some good chances for scattered late day storms, that could, you know, keep the temperatures uh, around average between the upper 80s and into the low 90s, which isn't bad at all. Still warmer, but not as, not as excessively hot than it will be here. All right, so as we take you into Sunday, the last day of July, of course, and same thing, I still expect uh, the weather to stay mainly dry with not a, with not a whole lot of rain to deal with. So, so the big the big concern is just the heat, which we'll look at the high temperature map in just a minute. But if you go up north into the Mississippi Valley, still there could be some pretty good chances for some scattered showers and thunderstorms. So that will keep the uh, hotter temperatures uh, under control a bit, which is good, but unfortunately not for us. And speaking of that, here are the high temperatures for the day on the last day of July, which again will be this coming this coming Sunday. And it shows that we'll mostly be in the mid to perhaps some areas in the upper 90s, if that is the case as we head towards that day. Again, some places like Jacksonville, uh, Savannah, Georgia, and perhaps for Charleston, South Carolina, could see potential record high temperatures in the triple digits, but for the most part, that's what that's what the temperatures are going to feel like as a heat index value. So yeah, we're going to see heat index values for most of us in the triple digits, not just for a late week, but into the weekend. Farther up north you go for the rest of the Mississippi Valley region, again, due to those storms, that will keep the uh, temperatures, uh, again, a little bit, uh, at least a bit under control with upper 80s and low 90s, but outside of the rain, especially in the southern half of the valley, Temperatures will stay in the mid to upper 90s, unfortunately. So, yep, more and more brutal hot weather will be around for a little bit. Or maybe for a little while. All right, now heading into the beginning of next week to, as we kick off the new month of August. So this is the first day of the new month next Monday. And you can see on the GFS that I expect the same pattern to continue with more dry weather. but Again, it's just the heat that'll be another big concern. So most of the uh, scattered chances for showers and storms will stay up north across the central part of the Mississippi Valley in areas like Jackson and Birmingham. 
where the rain chances may stay at about 40 to 50 percent. And here are the high temperatures for the day on Monday of next week. And yep, it is going to stay the same, keeping things hot in the mid to upper 90s with heat index values in the triple digits. But there could be some record high temperatures in places like Jacksonville, all the way up towards Charleston, where there could be some triple digit uh, heat. And maybe for Augusta, Georgia, too. But like I mentioned, around this area between Jackson and Birmingham, where there could be some pretty good scattered chances for late day storms that will keep the temperatures around around average in the upper 80s and into the low 90s, which is not really that too bad, but it will still be, you know, on the humid side. So just FYI. All right, uh, taking you to next Tuesday, which is the second day of August. And right now, there could there could be just a few possible chances of some showers and storms. This time, it should be mostly just south of Orlando. So places like uh, Lake Wales, which is in Polk County, down in the southern part of Osceola and Brevard County, as you can see, about a 30% coverage of a few isolated storms as we head into next Tuesday. But other areas across the state will still be mainly dry. Uh, with still a lot of hot weather to deal with. But any better chances that do happen next Tuesday, again, still remains up north across the Mississippi Valley, but it shows that most of Alabama could see some pretty good uh, chances for some scattered uh, on and off shower and thunderstorm activity. And here are the high temperatures again, and for here in central Florida, as we, as most areas, again, will stay dry. We're still going to keep the temperatures in the upper 90s. But it is possible that if you go uh, a little farther east of Orlando, so I'm talking about places like the Leon Springs, the Land, Palm Coast, Pearson, all the way up towards Jacksonville, there could still be record high temperatures that may reach into the triple digits. But other than that, that's going to be what the temperatures will feel like if that is the case. But up north you go across parts of Alabama and Georgia due to those pretty good Chances for summer hit or miss storms that will keep the uh, temperatures, hotter temperatures that is under control with upper 80s and low 90s. But outside of the rain in places like Jackson, points west, still remaining things a lot hotter where there could be highs in the mid to upper 90s. <clears throat> but if there's any good news whatsoever, as we head into the middle of next week, a week from today, which is Wednesday, August 3rd, we could see the rain chances go up about, about around a 50%. So that could bring down the hotter temperatures a bit. If that is the case, we'll look at the map in just a minute. But yeah, there could be about a 50% coverage of some scattered late day storms to return as we head into the middle of next week. But if you notice up north, you go across portions of Alabama and Georgia, and perhaps for portions of the Florida Panhandle, there could be some locally heavy rain with those uh, higher chances for storms on that same day, if that is the case. So that could definitely keep the temperatures, again, around average. Temperature-wise, for the middle of next week, uh, since that we may not see a whole lot of a cool, uh, uh, not a whole lot of a cool down, that, that is, I mean, slightly, but not much. You should know that. <laughs> But it shows that for the most part, temperatures will still be hotter in the mid to upper 90s, especially all across the peninsula. But in this area here, where there could be some locally heavier storms, that could keep the temperatures again around average with some 80s and maybe some 70s. All right, now what about for next Thursday, which is a week from tomorrow, August August 4th? And it shows that the rain chances will stay mostly around average. So we'll call for just about a 40 to a 50% coverage of some of those scattered late day storms right here in our coverage area with uh, still pretty good chances up here to the Northwest along I-10 between cities like Pensacola and into New Orleans where the rain could be locally heavy at times. And as we uh, take a look at those high temperatures for next Thursday, the 4th of August, and as you can see, again, it's the heat. So, yes, we're talking about more and more heat and humidity for next Thursday with highs in the mid to upper 90s with heat index values in the triple digits. But some areas like Jacksonville, Savannah, and Charleston could see records in the triple digits possibly. 
So again, just, just so you know that summer's not done yet. So just keep that in mind. But over here in the southern half of Alabama and into near Pensacola and the rest of the western side of the Florida Panhandle, there could be temperatures because of the high chance of storms, uh, cooler but average in the 80s. All right, now what about for the end of next week? This is for Friday, August 5th, and it shows that our chances of rain will start to wind down to about 30%. This time it, it looks like the isolated storm chances will be mostly to the will be, will be mostly off towards the far west of uh, Orlando, but just right along the Gulf Coast of the state where the chances will stay at 30%. But other than that, most areas across the viewing area will be will be drying out after a couple of days, which is Wednesday and Thursday of seeing better better chances of storms. But if you go farther to the far west and parts of Mississippi and Louisiana, there could be some pretty good ch chances for scattered hit or miss summer storms possible uh, for next Friday, which could, again, help temperatures cool off a bit. And here are the highs. Speaking of that, for next Friday, and as you can see, that some areas could see temperatures uh, a little cooler, but still warm with upper 80s to low 90s. But other than that, I think we could still see mid to upper 90s across most of the state. And if you go up north around central and south Georgia, and perhaps maybe for the Carolinas, temperatures could remain still excessively hot, with not just in the 90s, but some hitting records in the triple digits. All right, uh, here is Saturday, August 6th, the first weekend of the new month. And as you can see that the chances of rain will still be low between 20 to 30 percent. But uh, there could be some pretty good chances down around southern Florida. And again, that could help the temperatures, the hotter temperatures, that is, uh, cool things down a bit. So we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but for the rest of the state, farther up north, the rain chances will stay minimal between 20 to 30 percent. But uh, I expect most areas to stay dry at least at this time. And temperatures here in our coverage area looks to stay pretty much the same with maybe some around average in the upper 80s and low 90s, but others could still be seen mid to upper 90s possible. But if you go way up north into the Mississippi Valley, including the Panhandle, it is gonna stay excessively hot with not just in the way of 90s, but even some areas like Birmingham, Montgomery, Atlanta, into Charleston, there could be some there could be some potential record high temperatures in the triple digits so that could be around by the time we head into the day on saturday august 6th all right uh, as we now head into the land of voodoo country this takes you to sunday august 7th and it shows that the rain chances for some places will start to increase between 30 to 40 percent so uh so that could be good to see maybe a little bit of a of, of another cool down from those hotter temperatures so we'll, we'll have to wait and see not just for parts of the state but also there could be some pretty good chances for some scattered storms across the mississippi valley region too around about 40 to 50 percent so it's just another typical summer day as most of you should know but look at those temperatures for our coverage area as we head into the 7th of august Talking about temperatures winding down from the 90s to the mid to upper 80s. Well, that's not bad at all. Thanks to those good rain chances. But outside of central Florida, if you go up north into the Panhandle and also from the Mississippi Valley region, it is still going to stay sticking hot with more 90s with heat index values in the triple digits. And this is uh, the following Monday, August 8th, and right now the GFS is showing that the rain chances will start to shift a little bit to the west, affecting the Interstate 75 corridor. So the rain chances will stay between 30 to 30 to 40 percent, with some pretty good scattered chances up around the Mississippi Valley region. And right now it looks like the heat will crank back up again for the uh, second week of August. 
keeping uh, temperatures in the 90s with heat index values in the triple digits. But if you go a little bit to the east along Interstate 95 in places like Palm Coast, Flagler Beach, stretching all the way down towards Melbourne, temperatures will pretty much, will pretty much get back to average in the upper 80s and into the low 90s. Uh, farther up north you go into southern, southern and eastern Georgia and into the Carolinas, there could be some records in the triple digits potentially, so we'll have to wait and see. But right in this area where the rain chances will stay high, especially in parts of Alabama and Mississippi, just near the Gulf Coast area, that will uh, keep the temperatures cooler in the mid to upper 80s, which isn't bad. So it's good to see a little bit of a break from the heat up there, but not here, unfortunately. Now here is two weeks from yesterday. That will be for Tuesday, August 9th, and right now the rain chances will be mostly came back to isolated. So any chances that do happen will be mostly north of Orlando. So I'm talking about places like near and around Ocala and perhaps for Pearson and for parts of Blackwood counties, you can see just about a 30% coverage of a few isolated uh, spotty shower and thunderstorm activity, but most areas across the rest of central Florida will stay dry. Up to the north you go in parts of Georgia and maybe for the Carolinas, there could be uh, there could be just about a 30 to a 40 percent coverage of some isolated to a few scattered late day storms potentially. And that could be the same thing, too, for portions of the Mississippi, Louisiana and Alabama Gulf Coast regions. And here are the high temperatures for the 9th of August and here in central Florida, we will still we will still remain in the mid to upper 90s with still some cooler temperatures along the east coast of the state with 80s, upper 80s, that is, and maybe into the low 90s. But it's possible that if you go towards the southern eastern half of Alabama, there could be some records that could hit at about 100 or so with others around the valley still staying in the 90s. All right, this is uh, two weeks from today, Wednesday, August 10th, and still, I don't see a whole lot of signs of greater chances of rain do, to do with here in central Florida. So for now, we'll keep the uh, coverage area dry. So any better chances that do happen on the day for Wednesday, August 10th, will remain up towards the north around most of the uh, Florida panhandle for southern east Alabama, all the way up towards Charleston with about a 40 to a 50% chance for some scattered late day shower and thunderstorm activity and here are the high temperatures and again it will still keep the same so still dealing with, dealing with more heat and humidity with 90s with records in the triple digits in places like jacksonville all the way up into southern east georgia but as you can see across the central part of mississippi where there could be some pretty good chances for scattered showers and storms that will uh, keep the uh uh, temperatures around average, you can say, in mostly in the mid to upper 80s. All right, this is uh, two weeks from tomorrow, Thursday, August 11th. And here in central Florida, most of us should be dry, but there could be a few storms in spotty areas, that is, if you go up to the north and west. In places like Ocala, Sumterville, the villages, and all the way up towards uh, Jacksonville. But in parts of the Panhandle, like Panama City, uh, Destin, Pensacola, Tallahassee, and into the southern portions of Georgia, there could be around, or there could be about, I should say, a 40 to a 50 percent coverage of some scattered storms. Again, it's just another typical summer day. But just, re but just remember, though, that we are in the land of voodoo, so things can always change as we get closer. So I'll keep you posted. But unfortunately, still we're going to be dealing with more heat and humidity with temperatures in the mid to upper 90s with records in the triple digits, especially in the northern part of the state. And for most areas, of course, in the Mississippi Valley. And last but not least, the GFS trend ends to Friday, August 12th. And uh, it shows on the model that there could be a few storms, especially from parts of Orange County and north between 30 to about 30 to 40 percent. But if you go up towards southern Georgia and perhaps as far northeast as the eastern Carolinas, 
there could be about a 40 to perhaps a 50% coverage of some uh, scattered summer pop-up showers and storms where the rain could be, where some of that rain that is could become locally heavy at times, such as Savannah and perhaps as far east, northeast as Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Again, this is land of voodoo, so we'll have to wait and see because this is two weeks out. And here is the last look at the temperatures for the day on the 12th of August. And yep, it will still be the same, keeping things a lot hotter with 90s and records in the triple digits. So there you have it there, folks. So what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do right now is go ahead and sign out of Facebook Live on this Wednesday evening. So as usual, I'll I'll have another live update with the weather tomorrow night same time at eight o'clock and i will continue as usual by posting more notes and updates on my blog and social media platforms 24 7. but in the meantime i hope you enjoy the rest of your wednesday evening and remember to continue to stay safe by taking care of yourselves and each other and uh, god bless